tonight, we're going to do a revision of our exponents. So our question says to us, say whether the first number is greater than, smaller than, or equal to the second number. Hence, work out the value of each number first. All right, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we don't have people rushing ahead of us. Okay, so we need to look. We've got two columns there, all right, and we need to see which one is bigger. The ones on the right or the ones on the left. The hint that they gave to us is work out the value of each number first. Now that's a really, really good hint, especially even when you're doing multiple choice questions, always to work out your question first before you just go and answer the questions. So if we're looking at the first one, two to the power of three, as a reminder, what does two to the power of three mean, guys? What does two to the power of three actually mean? It means, okay, I'm not seeing anyone fill me in the chat there. I'm seeing many other things, all right? But two to the power of three is the same thing. Good, thank you guys for saying two, whoopsie, that's a bit big, hey? Let's go this way. Two times two times two. Okay, so that's what two to the power of three means. It means I'm gonna see two, times two, times two. So I'm seeing two three times. So two to the power of three is gonna give me eight. What does three to the power of two mean? Three to the power of two means three times three. And three times three, what am I gonna get when I do three times three, everybody? Nice, well done. Okay, I'm gonna get nine. All right, now we learned this little trick earlier in the term when we're trying to work out which one is bigger and which one is smaller. I said to you guys, the bigger one always gets two dots. So the bigger value here is gonna be nine. So I'm gonna give him two dots and the smaller value is gonna be one. So he's gonna get one dot. And then I'm gonna go join up my dots. Another way that we saw it, Okay, another way that we've done it before is we said to ourselves, we use the crocodile mouth and we said in the crocodile mouth, which way is the crocodile is always going to go for the bigger number. So which one's the bigger number, eight or nine? It's going to be nine. All right. Reminding ourselves again, what does five squared actually mean? Five squared actually means five times five. Good, nice answers in the chat. And five times five gives me 25. Okay. What does two to the power of five actually mean? What does two to the power of five actually mean, everybody? Two to the power of five is two times two times two times two times two. I need to see the two five times. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. And 16 times two is going to give me 32. So well done to those of you who said it's two times two times two times two. We want to see it five times. And then when we multiply it out, we're going to get 32. So we're asking ourselves again which side, which number is bigger. 32 or 25, of course it's going to be 32. So 32 is going to have two dots. 25 has one dot. And then we're going to join them up. All right, I hope that this really helps the dot thing. I hope that some of you used it in your tests and your exams. Okay, I hope some of you used it in your tests and exams. The dot thing really, really helps me. Okay. The next one we've got is the square root of 625. So ooh, the square root of 625. What times what gives me 625? Nice. Well done, guys. 25. So the square root of 625 is 25. All right. I need to make sure that I'm saying to myself, what times what? 
gives me 625, and that is 25. 5 to the power of 2, what's 5 to the power of 2 the same as saying? It's the same as saying 5 times 5. Good. So 25. Is 25 equal to 25? Yes, he is. And last one that I'm going to do for you guys or with you guys, and then I'm going to give you some to try by yourself, and I'm going to ask some volunteers to help me out. I've got 7 to the power of 3. So I want to see 7 times 7 times 7. Right. Yo, some people are super quick. Cabello, Navlan, well done. 7 times 7 times 7 gives me 340. Hey, how do I do that if I don't have a calculator? I go and I do my multiplication sums. All right. 49 to the power of 2. What's 49 to the power of 2 the same as saying? 49 times 49. I'm going to go practice it on the side here for myself. I'm saying 49 times by 49. So I always start with a number on the bottom, on the side. 9 times 9 gives me, uh, 9 times 9 is 81, so I put the 1 and I carry the 8. 9 times 4 is 56, and 56 plus 8 is going to give me 44. Am I done yet? No, I'm not done. What must I do now? Now I must look at the next number across, and the next number across is the 4. But it's not just the four. What do I know is so special about this four? It's missing a zero. So first I put my zero in. Then I go and I start again. So four times nine is 80. What, four times nine. Am I doing the wrong thing, guys? Four times nine. No, I am right there. Four times nine. Who can tell me? Four times nine. 36. Good. So I put my six. And I carry my three. Just making sure, just testing you all. Okay. All right. Um, four times four. What's four times four, everybody? Four times four? 16. Nice. Okay. Four times four is 16. All right. Four times four is 16. So I must remember to add the three. So 16 plus three gives me 19. Right, what's left to do? Add them together. So when we add them together, all right, we're going to say 1 plus 0 is 1. 4 plus 6 is 10. So I put the 0 and I carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 5. And 5 plus 9 gives me 14. So I put the 4 and I carry the 1. And 1 plus 1 gives me 2. So what's the same as saying 249 squared? It's the same as saying 49 times 49, and that gives me 2,401. Now I need to look at these um, questions, and I need to say to myself, which number is bigger? So 2,401 is bigger. So two dots go to 2,401. And one dot goes to 303, 343. All right, I'm going to put two up there for you guys to try by yourself. While I have those two up, I'm going to see if there's any questions, first of all. So I am letting you guys try those two by yourself. And in the meantime, let's see here. We've got Verne Lee. Verne Lee, what's your question? Ma'am, mm -hmm. I don't understand. E, ma'am. You don't understand E. So, Verne Lee, we haven't done E yet. We're just going to give everybody a chance to try first, and then we're going to do it together, I promise. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, cool. Thanks, Verne Lee. All right. Um, I've got here Pumi. Pumi, what's your question? No, I don't have a question. Okay. Um, I think the answer to E is 100. I said 100 times 100, so it gave me 1. Okay, so let's go. So you said 100 to the power of 1 gives you 
100. Hand Thank wedge. you. That's amazing. And one to the power of 100? Um, one. Good, because one times 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 one is going to give you one, hey? Okay. Which one do I need to put two dots by? Sorry? I'm going to put two dots by the hundred, hey? Do you agree? Yeah. And one dot by the one. And join them. Well done. Thank you so much for your help. All right. Uh, I see that I've got um, Mela Kushle. Mela Kushle, do you have a question for me? Hi, Mela Kushle. Mela Kushle, can you hear me? Mela Kushle? Okay, so I, I can't seem to hear Mela Kushle. So we're going to have a look at the next one. All right. Um, Mibuyo, is that you going to do it with me? Ma'am, I think yes. the 261 is, the answer is 72. Okay. How did you get 72? Talk to me. Ma'am, I divided 30, 30, 260 times th divided by 3. Okay, so let's go through that and have a look. Cool. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, so um, Mivuyo was saying to me that she took 216 and she looked at this number over here. All right. And she said that she divided by three. Now be careful, guys. Be careful. Remember, what is this special symbol here? That special symbol means to square root so it's the opposite of root of, of squaring or raising to the power of three okay it's the opposite so instead what are we going to do we are going to say what times what times what gives me 216 so what times what times what gives me 216 so um Mivuyo, does that make sense why it's not divided by three yes ma'am Awesome. Thank you, Mavuyo. All right. Um, Tara Jane, I saw that you wanted to answer the question. You were here. There we go. Right, Tara Jane, yeah. what times what times what gives you 216? Six. Six. Very nice. Well done. So six times six times six gives me 216. Now, Tara Jane, how did you know that? Is it something you learned? Um, is it something that you worked out? Yeah, basically at our school, we, we have like this big exponents worksheet and we get activities every day. So we practically like memorize them. Is that well what done. Nice. Well done, Tara Jane. Okay, so what Tara Jane is saying there is a really good way to learn them. Okay, to have them all out on a worksheet to learn all your squares and all your cube numbers all the way up to 10. So to know what all the squares are and all the cubes all the way up to 10 and you practice them all the time. You keep practicing, you keep practicing, you keep practicing until you know what the numbers are. All right, the square root of 36, what times what gives me 36? Well, if you practice them like that, then you know that the square root of 36 is gonna be six. So is six equal to six? Yes, he is. Six is equal to six. Okay, let's bring up two more questions for you guys. All right, go and have a look at those ones for me. I see I have some hands raised while you are waiting for those. Um, so I've got um, Mulalo, Mulalo. Do you have a question for me? Hi, Mulalo. Can you hear me? Right. Not able to hear Mulalo. Let's go to Grace. Grace, do you have a question for me? No, this is not a question, but once everyone is done, can I help you with G? Of course you can. Let's do it together now, Grace. Are you ready? Let's go. Tell me. Yes. What do I need to do? So for four to the power of two, you times four, you times four by itself, 
and Beautiful. it gives you 16. Nice. And then after that, you tap four times two, which equals to six. Are you sure six? Think again, four yes. times two? Yes, Miss. Hey, no, eight. no, no, Mrs. Eight. It's eight. It's eight. 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 You were just testing me. You were testing to see if I was awake on a Monday. Don't stress. All right. Which one's bigger, then 16 or eight? 16 is bigger, ma'am. So two dots this side, one dot that side. Join them up. Well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Grace. You're a rock star. Thank you. Okay. Uma? Hello, ma'am. Um, oh, I don't wow. understand um, how we got six from 216 um, cubed. Oh, Uma. No problem. So if we look at what cubed means, it means what times what times what gives me six. So you could go through all your numbers if you wanted to. You could say one times one times one gives me one. Two times two times two gives me eight. Three times three times three gives me 27. Four times four times four gives me 64, hey? Yes. Five times five times five gives me 125. And finally, six times six times six gives me 216. So you could do it that way, all right? Or you could memorize all of those. So you would know that one to the power of three is one, yes. two to the power of three is eight, three to the power of three is 27, four to the power of three is 60. Does it make, does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, awesome, Umar. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, Hayden. Hayden, do you have a question for me or are you going to help me with H? Now I'm going to help you with H. Wonderful. Let's go, Caden. So you're going to say 2 to the power of 3, 2 times 2 times 2. Good. What does that give you? 6, ma'am. Are you sure 2 times 2 times 2? Two? 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times another 2 will give you? Sorry, ma'am. 8, ma'am. Good, nice. Can you see why it's so important, Caden, to write it out, hey, to see? Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what's four times two? Eight, ma'am. Eight, good. So what's going to happen here in the middle? You're going to draw an equal sign, ma'am. Very nice. Well done. Don't forget to write out your sum, okay, so that you can do it carefully. Otherwise, what happens in a test or exam? What happens? I don't know about you, but I get all nervous. My brain goes blank. I can't remember. So if you've written it out clearly, it's going to help, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thanks, Caden. Okay. I'm going to move the screen down for you guys. All right. And we have our last two to do here. So we have our last two to do. Have a look at those ones for me. So have a look at those last two. While you're looking at those last two, I'm going to see here I've got some hands risen here. So let's go. Um, Melakushla, do you have a question for me? Melakushla, I think maybe something's wrong with your sound tonight. I'm so sorry. Looks like you. Um, hi, teacher Kirsty. I just hi. want to, while while we have Mila Kushle, I want to ask her to go to the very left bottom where the speaker sign, the microphone sign is, and I want to ask her to click on that, the drop down menu, and make sure that she has two ticks, and then we'll be able to chat with her. Thank you so much, Hugo. All right, Mila Kushle, I'm going to come back to you. Let's see now. All right, Melakushle, are you able for, to speak to us now? Okay, not yet. Maybe Hugo can help you in the chat. All right, um, let's go, Mwande. Mwande? Yes, ma'am. Hello, you have ma a question? Hi. No, ma'am, I help you with I, ma'am. Lovely. Let's go, Mwande. Let's go. Help me out. So, ma'am, 10 to the power of 2, ma'am. We're first going to say 10 times 10. Beautiful. And what's that equal to? Which can I give us 100, ma'am? 100. Very nice. Good. And How then, ma'am, we're going to say 10 times 10 times 10. Good. 
good. So a thousand is the same thing as saying 10 times 10 times 10. Good. So a thousand cubed is the same thing as saying 10. Very good. Well done. Nice. So which one's going to get two dots? Which one's going to get one dot? Um, the 10 to the power of two will get two dots. Lovely. This one's going to get one dot, hey? And I'm going to join them up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mawande. That's awesome. All right. Um, let's see here. I've got, um, I, I might say your name wrong. You might need to pronounce it for me again, but Axelin. Did I get it right? Ax, oh, no, I seem to have lost them. Okay, um, let's go. Uh, Mozeki? Mozeki? All right, I think our sound might be a bit off there as well. All right, um, let's go Pumi. Hi, Pumi. Yes, hi. Hi, are you going to help me with the next one? Um. Yes, with number J. I think the answer is eight. With number J. Beautiful, because we, well done, much better. Because now you ask yourself, what times what times what gives you five, one, two? And you got eight. Well done. Eight. Very nice. And two to the power of three, what's two to the power of three? Eight. Eight. Good. So two to the power of three is eight. Okay. Eight. So am I going to now use the crocodile mouth where I'm going to see which one's bigger and which one's smaller? Am I going to use that? Do I need the crocodile mouth? No. No. What am I going to say? What's, what am I going to put in between those two numbers? Um, equal to. Equal. Well done. Very good. Thank you so much, Pumi. Much better. Well done for getting that one. All right, guys. So I really hope that that made sense to you. I'm going to go over one or two of them using the crocodile mouth, just in case for those of you who aren't sure what I meant by the two dots and the one dot. All right. So if we go and we take, for example, okay, let's go and take, for example, the first two up here. Okay. So if I'm looking at the first one, all right, I'm going to say to myself, I've got eight and I've got nine. So which number is bigger, eight or nine? The answer is going to be nine. So if I'm using the crocodile mouth method, remember the crocodile mouth always wants to eat the bigger number. So it must be open to the bigger number. All right. For B, if I'm looking at 25 and 32, I'm going to say to myself, which number is bigger, 25 or 32? Which one's bigger? Tell me there in the chat, which one's bigger, 25 or 32, guys? Okay, exactly, good. It's 32. So which side is the crocodile's mouth going to face towards? Which side is it more hungry towards? It's going to be more hungry towards 32. So if I'm doing the crocodile mouth method, remember the crocodile mouth is open always to the bigger number. If you use the dots method, it's exactly the same. Remember, we always put the dots that have the most on the bigger side. Okay, so the number that's bigger gets two dots. The number that's smaller gets one dot. If you're using crocodile, exactly the same. For crocodile, you're going to ask yourself which side is bigger. The crocodile's mouth is always going to be open to the bigger number. Okay. All right. So let's have a look at our next section now. I feel like maybe we need a little bit of a brain break. So for your little brain break here tonight, we're going to do it with an exponent scheme, of course. Okay. We're going to do it with an exponent scheme, of course. And your question is 2a. Um, let's see if we can make that a bit bigger for you guys, because that's a bit small. Um, so we're going to use 2a to help us tonight. So, oh, that's not going to help us either. Right. What is the, sorry, guys. What is the largest number you can make with the symbols 3 and 4? So what's the largest number you can make with the symbols 
3 and 4. Okay, what is the largest number you can make with the numbers yeah, 3 and 4? Go give that one a try for me. 3 and 4. What is the largest number you can make with the numbers 3 and 4? Okay, what is the largest number you can make with the numbers three and four? All right. And then what is the smallest number you can make with the numbers three and four? So I'm looking for the largest number you can make with the numbers three and four. Remember, it's got a exponent scheme, everybody, because tonight we are busy working with exponents. So what's the largest number you can make with the numbers three and four? And then what's the smallest number you can make with the numbers three and four? Remember, we're doing exponents. Try to see if that helps. If you do exponents, see if that can help you with one of them. All right, what's the largest numbers you can make with the numbers three and four? And what's the smallest number you can make with the numbers three and four. Have a look for me. Have a look, have a look. Okay. Right. Give you a few minutes while you're thinking about it. Hi. Right. Okay, so. What's the largest you can number you can make with three and four? And what's the smallest number you can make? So I've got Melo here. Melo, do you want to give me an answer? What's the first one that you got? What do you think? Mem four and three. Wait, four, four and three as an exponent. Good. So you're saying to me that the largest number you can make is four to the power of three. Okay. So yes, what's four to the power of three. It's four times four times four, and that gives you 64, hey? Yes, ma'am. There's one number that's bigger, but thank you, Melo, for your answer. You're on the right track. Thank you. All right. Um, let's go to Moziki. Moziki, can you hear me? Um, Right, I think maybe we might have another problem with a speaker here. Okay, let's go, Amar. Amar, we're hearing from you lots tonight. Well done, Amar. What's the mm -hmm. largest number you can make with the numbers three and four? Ma'am, so you say um, three to the power of four, and your answer would be 81. Nice, beautiful. If you say three to the power of four, it gives you 80. One and we know 81 is bigger than 64, so well done. It's 81. I saw lots of people are saying 43 here, hey? but we know that 81 is much bigger than 43, so well done. Yes, ma'am. Well done, guys. All right, now what's the smallest number you can make with the numbers three and four? And remember, you can do anything with them, same as you can use them in exponents, you can do anything with them. What's the smallest number you can make with the numbers three and four? All right, let's go Dimple. Dimple, have you got an answer for me? Yes, what's the smallest numbers you can make? I think, I'm thinking of you can make four, four times three. You four said times any... three? That's beautiful, four times three. Four times three gives me 12. That's definitely smaller than the other two that we've had. So well done, that's along the same right track. Okay, but there is one that's slightly smaller, but thank you, Dimple, for your answer. Well done. All right. Uh, Christina. Christina, um, what did you say? For the smallest one, I said four minus three. Beautiful. Well done, Christina. For the smallest one, we're going to say four minus three, and that's going to give me one. Congratulations, Christina. Thank you so much. Okay, You're Christina welcome. is... Christina is absolutely right. Four minus three will give us one. Well done, guys. Okay, well done. 
all right. Oh, I'm seeing some other things. I'm seeing somebody was saying to me here, oh, um, Melapishitz is saying to me, what about ma'am? Three minus four. You are perfectly right. Look at you taking on your integers. Three minus four gives you negative one. Amazing. So I would accept that as well. I would also accept this answer of negative one. Well done. Well done, guys. You're on fire tonight. Um, Hugo, hey, they're doing really, really well. Okay, so I would they accept. They are so awake. They're doing very well. Well done, Amazing. guys. I would accept one and I would accept negative one. Well done, everybody. All right, let's go back to our lesson for tonight. So, in our lesson, we've got number three, and number three says, Numbers that follow each other, okay, like six and seven, are called consecutive numbers. So numbers that follow each other are called consecutive numbers. So they're saying to us, what is the difference, right? What is the difference? Oh, make it a bit bigger. What is the difference between three to the power of four and four to the power of three? So we are looking. Sorry, guys, we're just having a bit of a pen problem here at the moment. We are looking at um, number 3B. And for number 3B, what have we just seen? It says to us, what is the difference between 3 to the power of 3 and 4 to the power of 3? So go and do that sum for me. Go and try it. Go and try it out. All right. What is the difference? So we're doing this one. What is the difference between three to the power of three and four to the power of three? What is the difference? All right, I'm gonna work it out here for you guys on the side and then I'm gonna ask for some help. So if I've got three to the power of three and four to the power of three and they're asking me for the difference between the two, I'm gonna go say four to the power of three minus three to the power of three. So the difference between three to the power of three and four to the power of three is the same thing as saying four to the power of three minus three to the power of three. Now, what do I know about four to the power of three? Four to the power of three is the same thing as saying four times four times four. And what do I know about three to the power of three? It's the same thing as saying three times three times three. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Yes, the numbers are consecutive. Yes, it's four and three. And four minus three does give us one like we saw in the last answer, all right? But in this question, it's not just four and three, guys. It's four to the power of three and three to the power of three. And when we're doing bod mass, bod mass tells me I do my brackets and then I do my odds. So three to the power of four, we need to do that first before we go and do the difference. And just like Mr. Hugo says in the chat, remember, what does difference mean? Difference means to minus. All right, so four times four times four gives me 64, minus three times three times three gives me 27, and 64 minus 27 will give me 50. Okay, I want you guys to go and try to do B by yourself first. So go have a look at B first by yourself. Here he is, B. What is the difference? Difference means minus between six to the power of two and seven to the power of two. What is the difference? between six to the power of two and seven to the power of two. Okay. Melo, are you going to help me with this one, Dee? Ma'am, no, I wanted to ask a question, but sure, it actually course. goes back to number one from the past, before we did okay. this. Break. Okay, that's fine, guys. I'm just going to move up to number one very quickly for Melo. So make sure that you've got that question down. Take a screenshot if you want to, so you can try the next one as well. Melo, which number are we looking for? One, e, ma'am. 
one e right yes. melo what's up with this one ma'am so you said 216 equals three right ma'am um is that for f hey ma'am equals six right yes but ma'am don't you say six times six times six because of the power of three absolutely and what's six times six times six what does it give you wait ma'am can i please just calculate that of course. And it equals 216. Oh. Good. Ah, does it make sense now? Yes, ma'am, it does make sense. Okay, good. Okay, cool. No problem, Melo. Thank you, ma'am. All right, you're welcome. Okay, let's see who I've got on here next. Who have we not heard from tonight? Um, Unati. Unati, are you going to help me with B? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Unati, let's go. What's my sum going to say, Unati? So, ma'am, we said it's 3 over 3 and 4 over 3, ma'am. 3 over 3 and 4 over 3. Are oh, you doing the same one with me, hey? You're doing B? Yes, ma'am. So, do you agree it's going to be 7 to the power of 2 minus 6 to the power of 2, hey? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now I'm going to say 7 to the power of 2 is the same thing as saying what? Um, 7 times 7. Good, 7 times 7. Nice. And 6 to the power of 2, what's 6 to the power of 2 the same thing as saying? 6 times 6. Good, 6 times 6. Cool. So, what's 7 times 7? Seven times seven. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Um, seven, wait, seven, seven times seven, seven, seven times. It's equal to 49. Beautiful, 49. Minus six times six, what's six times six? 36. 36, good. And 49 minus 36 is gonna give me what? What is? Wait, ma'am. Where? Okay. I wanna get the answer. Now. It's thirteen. Thirteen. Good. It's thirteen. Okay. Can you see how following the steps really helps, hey? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks, Naughty. All right. So let's do my next sum together very quickly. So my next sum is the difference between four squared and three squared. So four squared is the same as saying four times four. So that gives me 16 minus three squared is the same as saying three times three. And that gives me nine. So 16 minus nine gives me seven. 16 minus nine gives me seven. All right. Let's have a look at the last one there. It wants to know what is the difference between 4 squared and 5 squared. So 4 squared, uh, sorry, so 5 squared minus 4 squared. 5 times 5 gives me 25 minus 4 times 4 gives me 16. 25 minus 16, that's going to give me 9. All right, guys, I hope that that was nice and easy for you. I hope that that's nice and easy for you. Let's have a look at the next question. It says, what do you notice about the squares of consecutive numbers? So consecutive means one after the other. Consecutive means one after the other. Did you, did you Notice anything um, about the squares of consecutive numbers? What do we notice about them? All right. In other words, let's write those squares down for you guys. Let's write the squares down of consecutive numbers for you guys. All right. So, okay. When we did this first one, consecutive numbers, the difference between the squares of the first lot of consecutive numbers, this one was 13. Okay, when we did this one, it was seven. When we did this one, it was nine. 
What do you notice about those numbers, the, 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 the squares of consecutive numbers? What do we notice about them? The difference, can we see that they're prime numbers? Okay, except for nine, nine's not a prime number. All right, but what about the fact that can we divide them by two? That's something we can notice, hey? So the difference, the differences, the differences are odd numbers. Yes, can you see that the differences between the squares of the consecutive numbers, those ones that we just did, all those numbers are odd numbers. All right, last two questions for tonight. Arrange the following numbers in ascending order. Ascending, remember, means from smallest to biggest. So ascending means from going from the smallest number to the biggest number. The first thing I would go and do, everybody, is I would go and sort all these numbers out so they simplify. So 3 to the power of 2 is the same thing as saying 3 times 3, and that gives me 9. 64 squared to the square, sorry, square root, sorry, the square root of 64, that's going to give me 8. 2 to the power of 4, what's 2 to the power of 4? That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that gives me 16. The cube root of 64, in other words, what times what times what gives me 64? That's going to give me 4. 2 to the power of 3, so 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 8. And then finally, I like Amar's giving me all the answers in the camera. Well done, Amar. <laughs> and then finally, 5 squared, 5 to the power of 2 gives me 25. All right. So now working on this one, going from smallest to biggest, because that's what ascending order means, ascending order. My smallest number here is going to be 4. All right. Then my next number would be, oh, I've got two numbers now next in line, have I not? Um, where did I get my, I've got eight and I've got eight. Those two were equal to each other, all right? Then I've got nine, then I have 16, and then I have 25. All right, guys. I want you to try this last one by yourself. What we will do on Wednesday's lesson is we will do that one first. So that'll be the very first question we do on Wednesday. Just a reminder of what we did in this lesson. So make sure you take a screenshot or you've written it down so that you can work it out. And we will go through that one together on Monday. It is, I mean, on Wednesday, sorry, it is Monday night. So Mr. Hugo is going to put up your poll for this evening. He's going to put your poll up for this evening so you can answer the question. Please make sure you all answer the question. If you have any more questions for tonight's lesson, please make sure that you put them in the chat so that we can also answer those on Wednesday night's lesson. All right. Hey, so make sure that... Yes, Mr. Hugo. If I may, while we still have a oh. few seconds, I'd like to ask all our clever students, if you can maybe just scroll up a bit, if they can oh. guess what the difference in squares would be for five square and six square. Ooh. Not calculate, look at the answers that you got and guess what the difference in squares would be for five square and six square. But Ooh, you have to look at the that's answers nice that you challenge. got already. Yeah. So that's a, that's a guess. You don't got? even have to calculate. Look at the answers that you got already for the previous ones and guess what that one would be if you follow Ooh, the pattern for the answers that you got. That's a nice challenge, Mr. Hugo. I like it. So have a look at those questions. Those are the questions there. Mr. Hugo is sending you a question, a, a, a challenge. He's saying, what will the difference without doing any calculators, five, six squared and five squared? All right, well done, guys. Well done. It's 11. So some of you, did you see the trick? Did you see the cheat? Well done. Thank you, Mr. Hugo. <laughs> well done. There is a cheat there to do. Absolutely. Well done, guys. 
All right, not everybody has answered the poll. Guys, please make sure that you answer the poll before you um, leave the, uh, the class. I'm seeing Verony saying, ma'am, do we need to work them out the square roots first to get the answer? If you know what the answer, and you can do the squares in your head and you can do it that way, that's fine. There is a cheat there to do it, um, but you have to look at the pattern to see the pattern. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I hope that you all have a good evening.